Thank you very much, Andy. Uh, I'm really delighted to be here. My first trip to this proper CCQ. I mean, I have been here before when this was all under construction. And, you know, I have known Andy Millis well since 1990. He wrote several papers together in the 90s. And he's one of the persons I respect the most in the world. I mean, it's with no, I mean, I don't exaggerate. This is just the truth. But I did not know this side of Andy. The reason I liked him very much, uh, he's no nonsense, says things as it is. I don't know that he's capable of flattering. Okay, this is like, I'm seeing a new side of Andy Millis. Maybe as we get older, we, uh, we develop, you know, abilities to that we didn't have. Thank you very much, Andy. All right. So what I want to talk about is... Oh, I'm sorry, now that you started, let me just interrupt to say very briefly, A, that Shankar has graciously agreed to take questions during the talk as well as at the end. Yeah. And B, if you're watching the talk on Zoom, put your questions in the Q&A or in the chat, and I will uh, raise them with Shankar yes. as uh, appropriate. Sorry. Yeah, and I'm here all day. Uh, feel free to find me, talk to me, or make an appointment, and then you can send me email. I mean, I basically do physics 168 hours. I have nothing else in my life. So uh, I'll be very happy uh, to communicate with any of you. So the subject I want to talk about is, I would say, one of the most active areas in all of physics. And I don't think I'm exaggerating. A graphene has a turned out to a superconductor, not monolayer, uh, you know, really boring graphene, but uh, certain aspects of it like twisted graphene, but even untwisted graphene. As most of you know, I'm gonna talk about it. And this work uh, is one of the few works which is entirely within CMTC. You know, as, as uh, Andy said, we have a very, very active center. I mean, 15 postdocs and 15 students and only three faculty members. It's a very coherent center where you do things together, collaborate a lot. And so it's, uh, Jaideep Sao is one of my colleagues who's involved uh, a little bit. But the main work is Yang Zi Chao's main work I talk about is Yang Zi Chao's. And we just posted a paper, I think this Monday, which is like a 25 page paper where many of the things I'll be talking about will be there. And uh, this is our first paper. This paper took almost two years to ac get accepted. Reason is that uh, we said it's electron phonon interaction. And of course, a smart, nobody likes electron phonon interaction because, you know, because 99.99999% of superconductors are caused by electron phonon interactions. If you see electron phonon interaction, experimentalists don't like you because it's novel enough. Theories don't like you because they think it's boring. So we had great difficulty having the paper published, but I think that, okay, let me give you my opinion. I think all the superconductivity is graphene arising from electron phonon interaction with one exception that I'll talk about. And uh, you know, not everything is completely understood. I'm not claiming that, but I think we understand quite a bit. Okay. Uh, so I also had, had extensive discussion with Andrea and Pablo and recently with Andre, Andre Bernavik, and we have started a collaboration with Andre on uh, extending some of this work to, uh, to make new predictions, actually. Okay, so this is the famous uh, original experiment, Kao et al. from MIT, who started the field. And what uh, the group found is that if you take two layers of graphene, two just layers of carbon, in hexagon and twist them with respect to each other so as to make the unit cell very large. I mean, the fact that it can be done is amazing. You know, it sounds like science fiction, but when you do it and look at the system, you find a plethora of what looks like exotic phases. There is an insulator. I mean, never mind whether it's mod or not, there is an insulator at some feeling, there is superconductivity other places, electrons and holes both sides. And uh, so, and there are all kinds of properties of these systems, magnetism, charm number, value polarization, which could all be big subjects. I have written a lot of papers on this, but I will focus on superconductivity, okay? And I'll tell you a bias right in the beginning. My bias is that this system would have been superconducting everywhere, but it's preempted by all these strongly correlated phases at certain fillings. And these two physics are independent of each other. You know, if you take aluminum, it's superconductor, but it also has many other things, you know. And, and the superconducting part, I, I believe, comes from phonons. And, you know, I'm just telling you my belief, and we have calculations supporting it. Uh, questions can be raised, of course, in a difficult system. Uh, when you say electron-phonon interaction, and you are a theorist, you have a tremendous disadvantage. 
because then you have to produce all the numbers that agree with experiment. People think that, oh, electron phonon interaction, everything is known. It's not true, everything is known. If you say electron electron interaction, nothing is expected of you because you know, no calculation can be done. You, see, you just throw the word strong correlation you know, randomly here and there and talk about exotic stuff because people know calculations are very hard. So this is the reason we face problems with referees. It drives me crazy, but you know, um, that's the way science goes. So there was a very important experiment from Spain, Barcelona, um, uh, Efetov, a graduate of a very famous university that, that I'm sure Andy will agree with me, okay? So uh, um, Efetov got his PhD at Columbia. So what he found, this experiment is pretty amazing. What he found is that there is this huge superconducting, superconduct is basically like everywhere. And then there are at, at commensurate filling, there is insulating phase. This, this experiment was very instrumental in developing my intuition for it. In fact, this was presented at a KITP conference. Uh, um, and I immediately said that I think this is telling us that it's all superconducting, except superconducting phase is preempted by strong correlation and insulating phases. But you know, since we are theorists, I had to do some, some RG calculation showing that we can actually calculate electron electron interaction in this superconductive. When you do RG in a complicated system, you find superconductivity everywhere. This is a very formidable RG. I mean, um, we have a postdoc, Robert Throckmorton, who, you know, I said the full RG is impossible. It's 34 parameter RG. Basically, people do one or two parameter. With symmetry, you could reduce to 10, but this is really a 10 parameter momentum shell RG. And what he found is that almost every phase you could think of, uh, you know, there will be a phase transition. There could be, I mean, this is the problem with RG. It tells you what is possible, doesn't tell you what actually happens. It says contact electron interaction, but we found lots and lots of fragile states, which I think is consistent with the experiment. You know, no two samples show exactly the same phase diagram. There are many, many phases. And most of those phases, all of those phases are coming from electron electron interaction, okay? And the superconductivity is invariably some high orbital superconductivity, which is what we expect from. I'm not going to talk about this. This is just to say that it's not like we ignored electron electron interaction completely. We did the calculation that everybody else does, you know, in our own language, and we found topological superconductivity. We found you know, all kinds of density waves and the superconductivity P and D. But I do not think that these findings of ours, and many, there are many, many papers like this in the literature. They're all very nice theoretical papers, but I think TC for all the superconducting is very, very low. And I do not believe the superconductivity that is observed in any of the graphene samples has anything to do with these RG calculations. You know, this is a strong statement, but among experts, I do not want to kind of be wishy-washy. That doesn't help. You know, if I say it could be this, that could be that, well, then at my age, that makes no sense. I'm going to, I'm going to take stands, okay? So, you know, these more systems are flat band systems, right? We have make the unit cell very large. So the system has very flat band now. People thought about flat bands for a long time. You know, I have a paper, this is when, I think this is even before Jennifer Cano was at Santa Barbara. This is, uh, you know, this is a long time ago. I, I spent, this is like, I, I spent, I was running a program for six months and we had a paper on flat bands. In fact, it was honeycomb lattice, you know, this is, this was, I mean, we were, we were very like, we were not bold. We said, oh, maybe they can make it in, in cold atoms. These are the days when we thought cold atoms can do everything. Okay. And now I was going to make a comment, but I'm on, I'm, I'm going to be on YouTube. I'm not going to make that comment. So these are the days when I thought cold atoms could do everything. And we wrote this paper, flat band, you know, it says an analytical work showing that all kinds of Wigner crystallization comes up. Then um, there was another paper we wrote, which is trying to create quantum Hall effect with, with uh, again, flat band. And the very famous paper, most of you know that, is Alan McDonald wrote a paper in twisted double layer graphene. This is now called twisted bilayer graphene, showing that there will be these flat bands. Now, why am I showing this paper? Not to brag that we thought about it a long time ago. I have to emphasize how limited our imagination was. What did we predict after all this? All of these three papers? Oh, there could be Wigner crystallization. That is where our imagination ended. All of these three papers in the end just said Wigner crystallization, okay? Not a single one said there could be superconductivity, okay? All these three papers have quotations from here. So this again tells me, of course, you're not thinking about electron phonon interaction, you're thinking just of electron-electron interaction. So you could think of, you know, ferromagnetism, antiferromagnetism, 
Vigna crystallization charge density way, but did not think of superconductivity. So all three papers speculated the most exciting flat bank possibility in non predict superconductivity. Okay, this is just a fact. You can go look at these papers. So are there concrete established examples of repulsive electron electron interaction in the superconductivity? Concrete. I'm going to make a strong statement and I'm hoping that Andy will challenge me. My answer is no. There is no concrete example. Helium-3 doesn't count because helium-3 first is not a superconductor, superfluid. And uh, you know, the issue of phonon, I mean, th those are some kind of spin excitations which come from electron interaction. So you know one mechanism, of course, which probably all metals go, eventually become, if you do RG, you find that at some low T, very, very low, exponentially low, it, it becomes superconductor. But I do not think that shows up in, you know, what that number is, I mean, I, 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 this number is variable. It could be uh, you know, as high as even a one microkelvin in some case, but I do not think that anybody has ever come up with a cone Luttinger higher than microkelvin. And this has high orbital pairing, non-S wave. And it basically arises from Friedel oscillation, that you have electrons, then there's Friedel oscillations. So you have some attraction in some high channel and that would produce superconductivity. But since the interaction is mostly repulsive, the TC is very low. So I would claim, again, you know, I want to make strong statements so that we have discussion and, 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 and um, disagreement. I would say this is no experimental, it has no experimental relevance. And I, you know, I want to be corrected. Uh, and, and strong coupling and a lot of cons Latinja, people have looked for it. I know Steve Kivelson looked for it a lot. Maybe Andy did also. I do not know of any example. I think minimal Hubbard model does not manifest any strong coupling superconductivity. This is not my work. I do not do quantum Monte Carlo, but this comes from my my quantum Monte Carlo guru, Matthias Troyer, who told me that there is no evidence. It doesn't rule it out, but yeah. So are you, are you restricting to theory here? Yeah, okay, so everything is theory here. Okay. So you can't say like an experimental, like heavy fermion materials, for example. No, I, I'll come to heavy fermion material. Okay. First, heavy fermion material, it's I mean, defining electronic interaction in a specific manner, okay? If you're exchanging a spin excitation, to me, that's just like regular BCS theory. It arises from electron electron interaction, but I'm talking about direct electron interaction. It's a bit semantics, okay? So, you know, that's why I said helium three doesn't count. So heavy fermion is like that. But I do not know how definitive the proof is that those are not electron phonon. I'm not a heavy fermion expert. Is it definitively established it's not electron phonon? You're talking sources of the spin wave velocity that measures. Yeah. Orders magnitude below the sound velocity. Okay. But I am I'm definitely making a distinction. Yeah, I'm definitely making a distinction that if you are exchanging some, you know, magnons or something like that's really like a phonon, the fact that they comes from originally from electron inter interaction is not very, yeah, yeah. right, 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 yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, people can have weak coupling. So, you know, the main basic thing is very simple. Coulomb interaction is repulsive and it, you know, it leads to the famous mu effect, which suppresses superconductivity. But you know, there could be situations. This is an open question in, in condensed matter physics. I'm not ruling out that this can never happen. I'm saying the cases I looked at cannot be relevant to graphene. That's all I'm saying, because just knowing at zero temperature of superconductivity is not enough. You have to be able to predict that TC could be a few Kelvin as experiment sees. Okay. So this is all I'm going to say about electron electron inter interaction. So may I say, I don't think that this is directly germane to your point. Yes. But, uh, um, I think that recent work by uh, Prokofiev, Kristinov, uh, Halle, probably Kuhn was involved, uh -huh. um, say that the Cohen-Mottinger picture is not at all correct and that you can get rather higher, although maybe not high enough for array materials, TC from what boils down to expansion plasmons. So yeah, this, that, this uh, I, I have to say, yeah, I have to say that having written more paper on plasmons than anybody did or alive, Okay, I completely disagree. I don't believe this. Okay, I just do not believe this. That if you include vortex correction, that is going to keep on going down. This is what I predict, right. because there is their no is there is no McDowell theorem. theorem. No, but their claim is that that has been done systematically by the method that I have uh, Okay. So a, okay. So perhaps yeah, I I uh, you know I mean it's the it's the last Monte Carlo the last season of all scoundrels. I cannot say anything. It's a black box producing some results. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so basically. Okay, we should discuss it because I don't believe it. Okay. I, I so basically, the claim is in the weak coupling limit where RCA is controlled, 
we showed there is a mechanism like a million times stronger than collagen mechanism that drives to these sort of claims have been made many times. Some of them before you were born. Okay. No, 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 I'm make, not making it up. You know, I have been around for a very long time. Plasma is my favorite object in the world. I mean, I love plasma than anybody else, you know. <laughs> or, I mean, and, and, and next to my children, I love plasma the most, okay? So if plasmas could produce superconductivity, I will throw a big party, invite all of you, okay? But Jerry Mahan wrote a paper saying plasmas give rise to superconductivity, and then Rusham did a calculation, including vortex. That has nothing to do with your work showing that it goes away the moment you include vortex correction. What I'm trying to say, I understand you have a claim, but I want you to understand what I'm saying. I don't believe the claim is what I'm saying, okay? <laughs> and that's my, that's my prerogative. I mean, what are you arguing about, okay? You have a calculation showing it. I said, you're, I do not believe plasmons can give PC, which is relevant to any, but we should talk, okay? Maybe you can, maybe you can make me believe, then I'm gonna throw a big party. Okay? <laughs> I love plasmons as, you know. I mean, that's our logo, CMTC logo is the ring diagrams, okay? This is published, right? This is not archive. Okay, good, we should discuss. All right, so I'm, I have said everything I'm gonna say about electron phonon interaction, okay? So I will claim, I think nobody can disagree with this way. Essentially all known superconductors by essentially, actually I didn't have essentially, then I realized Andy will be in the audience, so I put essentially, okay? Uh, some exception could be triplet superconductivity, but these are rare, helium-3, and heavy Feynman is in this category. I just ran out of space, so I didn't put heavy Feynman. okay? Graphene electron phonon interaction is very weak. We actually looked at what, you know, if you just take a monolayer graphene, at what temperature you expect electron phonon interaction is way below one millikelvin. I mean, so it's, it doesn't happen. Electron phonon interaction is very weak. Excuse me. Yes. So when you say all known superconductor phonon mediated, you're also anything that's magma mediated, boson mediated. Is no, that's, that, that, that's in, the, that, that's in oh. the, in the next slide. Okay, some triplet superconductor could be because of spin exchange type of thing, helium-3, heavy fermion, and so on. Yeah. Is that your question? No, but I was thinking more about the coup rates, for example. I understand that no one understands theoretically what's happening, yeah. but it's believed that it's still fluctuation mediated. Okay, I believe it's phonons, but since nothing is understood, this is, you know, yeah, okay. this is an argument on how many angels can fit on a thing, so. Yeah, fair <laughs> enough. Yeah. I mean, everybody thinks coup rates in electron interaction, because everybody wants it to be electron interaction. Otherwise, it's so boring, you know? So that's where you'll find no theoretical paper. Mm -hmm. No, let's say no theoretical paper that people respect in QPRE talks about PC at all. So typically people will give a very fancy talk on, you know, pseudo gap this, pseudo gap that, you know, hidden quantum criticality and all this, what about PC? And the person will look at me like I'm some kind of an idiot. Okay, and I would say, but the whole reason people got interested in this subject is high PC. And answer is I have nothing to say about PC. So, Right. You are right. So, again, just, just um, you know, the, I think our belief is that over a fair amount of the phase diagram, the superconductivity is in the pure Hubbard model is um, preempted by other phases like strike phase. Absolutely. This but various people, including me and Emmanuel, have published papers which actually have calculations of PC in the Hubbard model. And, and what and is the value? So why is Matthias telling me that there is no PC? I'm, I'm not going to speak for Matthias. Okay. Except as the phase so what is the phase. value of PC? That's the question. Um, if you translate using Hopping parameter T about 150 Kelvin. 150 Kelvin? Okay, I stand corrected yeah. then. So I have to ask Matthias, why is he giving me wrong information? Well, again, I, I suspect that part of the issue, this goes back to work that Chi Wei and others have done, mm -hmm. is that um, uh, the superconducting state, which is found, is preempted by another phase, which doesn't show up very well. Yeah, but how about model, But how about model applies to many systems, not just to cupids? Why is it superconductivity everywhere? Well, I mean, as I said, there are strike phases and things like that that have to be... That make okay, so this is a good discussion, and we should have it. Since I have nothing to say about it, it's, you know, it's, it's, I don't disagree with this, obviously, but, but this is not what is going on in graphene, I think. At least nobody has shown it. So why is electron phonon interaction graphene important at all? Okay, because in real graphene, just monolayer, this is very low, as I told you. What happens in Morris system, and this was really the only insight I've had because Andrea Young called me and asked me why their the resistivity is so large you know, thousand times larger than monolayer graphene and it's linear. I said, oh, it's very simple. Fermi velocity is strongly suppressed. That increases the effective electron phonon coupling because that goes into the denominator of the effective coupling. So if you have Fermi velocity factor of 100 lower, 
Well, electron Fermi coupling will be a factor of 100 higher. And in fact, Fermi velocity is zero at, you know, totally at the point where you have this magic angle, then, then this coupling is going to go to infinity. Of course, the theory would not apply there. And this may lead to, if you just do a BCS theory without doing anything, just BCS formula, this will immediately give you an SC of TC1K. This, this is the basic idea, okay? Now, since you have symmetry, I'm gonna talk about it. Including values, you can have higher order pairing. Normally, electron phonon interaction just this S wave. But here, as I'll show you, there could be degeneracy between S wave and F wave. And so, original argument was you cannot get higher order superconductivity, but now we know that that happens. Okay. So, it's a candidate. So, let's see, just saying it's candidate, you know, uh, and, and this question came up. So, my current belief is that there are some situations tell you, uh, in particular, Barnal bilayer graphene. It probably is electron paramagnon, but uh, but rest are electron phonon. I'm not very happy with that. Two mechanisms come in. If two comes in, it's possible others come in also. So the question is open. I want to distinguish between what I believe and what I can show. What I believe is is almost all electron phonon, but what we can show is definitely there is one example, Barnal bilayer graphene, where electron phonon doesn't explain the superconductivity, but electron paramagnon does. So there is still a lot to do. And now, based on what Andy just said, I cannot rule out Hubbard model physics either. I mean, we don't do quantum Monte Carlo, so I cannot do the calculation. But this is then this then should be looked into, you know, over here where you have the facilities and the ability. So uh, recently, several papers have come out. This is one paper. What they do, they take this graphene and you have gates on two sides. And this was an early suggestion. If you now apply gate potential to increase or decrease screening. For example, you can put the gates very far from each other, or you can bring them very close to each other, or you can apply electric field. So if it's electron-electron interaction generated, then when you reduce screening, then superconductivity should be enhanced. When you increase screening, superconductivity should disappear. Well, exactly opposite happens. So this is one paper. So I'm just quoting from the abstract. Although both superconducting and correlated insulated behaviors are strongest near the flat band condition, superconductivity survives to larger detuning of the angle. Our observations are consistent with a competing phase picture in which insulated superconductivity. And this is what I was saying, and this is what Andy was saying, what happens in cuprates, that superconductivity is preempted by correlated insulator. If you go to large angle, superconductivity survives and becomes much bigger. But there is direct experiment from the group of Lee at Brown, where he really change the gate distance in several samples. And so what we found is weakening the interaction strength and superconductivity consistent with scenarios in which electron phonon coupling competes against Coulomb interaction stability. Now this paper is an interesting history. First posting of this paper, if you go to archive and look at the first posting, it came to exactly the opposite conclusion. Their conclusion was that is like an electron. They found that TC is enhanced when screening goes down, okay? And then they found a mistake. I think Andre or somebody pointed it out. They found a mistake in their measurement and they rewrote the whole paper with new data and then it was accepted. And then is, this is this conclusion. I still remember Andrea calling me and saying, look, they have found this. So I should look into it. And, and now this is the conclusion. And then uh, Dima Fetter's group also said the same thing. Our suggests re-examination of often assumed patent and child, parent and child relation between insulating superconducting phase and more graphene. And basically saying that, they may not be connected. Of course, he doesn't say it's electron phonon, but he said they may be from different causes, okay? Now, these, all these things came two years after we have already proposed superconductivity from phonon. So it's not like these papers motivated us. We, we, we were, you know, so there are no papers from Lee Group, Nature Physics says a possible scenario that electron phonon coupling stabilize a superconducting phase with a spin triplet value singlet order parameter. This is what we said could happen. You know, the order, people originally thought you cannot get triplet superconductivity spin, in the spin channel from electron phonon, but here you can. So, you know, so our paper was posted long before. So I'll make a prediction based on this, since, you know, we are all interested in whether more at TMD, which is a Hubbard model also, I'll make a prediction here that nobody will see superconductivity in more at TMD, okay? And, you know, if Andy is correct, it's Hubbard model, more at TMD should have superconductivity. Electron phonon coupling is very weak because I asked in five, but it details matter, as he said. So maybe the calculation more would show there is a superconductivity, but my prediction is this because I asked in five math, it is very difficult to find electron phonon coupling constant for this more, the, the TMD materials. I could not find them anywhere. 
So he referred me to some obscure material science journal where he has tab somebody has tabulated. It's incredibly small. Yeah. Yeah, more disorder. Also. That's absolutely true. Yeah, that's absolutely true. But I'm saying even if they're not disordered, I mean, you know, it's going to be like one millikelvin or something like that. But again, if, it, if they see robust superconductivity, then cannot be electron phonon, then, then it becomes very interesting. Okay, so uh, this is what I was telling you that, you know, I just gave you the punchline. So seven nanometers stronger screening and only superconductivity survives, okay? And then when you go to 12.5 nanometer weaker screening, coherent insulator phases comes out, okay? So this is kind of like, you can say some evidence that it cannot be regular electron electron. So this is, these are the papers that I read, the, read from the abstract already. Okay. Just again, just, just um, yeah. uh, the cluster dynamical mean field picture of superconductivity in the Hubbard model is exactly this. Okay. You reduce the U to less than the, if the U mm -hmm. is greater than the critical value for the mod transition, you get correlated insulator phases with superconductivity adjacent. As you reduce the scale through the mod transition, um, once you go below the mod critical value, you get a superconductor. Yes, so I would say. Again, yeah, I would say that. The right. Question. Yeah, but the statement Hubbard model is just too generic for me. I would say that this calculation should be done for graphene. The calculations that you did, literally for graphene, exactly, you know, with the full band structure kind of thing, which is what I'll show you. And let's see what it is. I don't think you'll find superconductivity, but I will be delighted if I'm corrected. Trust me, that's what I want. Okay. Electron phonon problem is solved, and I would say it should be done. You guys have all the ability to do it. I'm willing to collaborate with you with the condition my name should not appear on the paper, okay? Because I just want to know what's going on, okay? But I do not think it's going to happen, but this is a very good question. You know, this is why we travel and give talks, okay? This is, I mean, I, 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 I'm very excited. And these calculations, you know, a lot of people have used Hubbard model here. So it can be easily adapted to the actual band structure and the calculation can be done. Oops. All right, so uh, I'm going to go back to long time ago, almost 15 years ago, and talk about graphene electron phonon interaction first. Okay, so you know, so we actually did the acoustic phonon calculation. This is another paper. It took like two years to get published, and then uh, they did an experiment which agreed exactly with our our theoretical paper. Uh, so uh, this is uh, what we did. We just calculated. We just cal did a first principles calculation of resistivity in graphene and TC in graphene, monolayer graphene, uh, because of electron phonon deformation potential coupling. And you know, you get that standard answer that you expect that at high temperature, but this high temperature, this is not Debye temperature. Often people in books, you say Debye temperature. It's not Debye temperature. You see that Debye temperature or log Runeisen temperature, whichever is higher, whichever is smaller, okay? And in graph, in metals, a Debye temperature is much smaller than log Runeisen temperature because Fermi momentum is so high. But in graphene, it's really block Grunheisen temperature. Block Grunheisen temperature is nothing other than this quantity. It's the energy of a phonon with two KF scattering because the most dominant resistive, resistive scattering is electron going in this direction, reverses its path. So that's two KF. So that's the most dominant scattering and that's the temperature scale. So we should see this. We made this prediction and uh, you know, produced results uh, using the known uh, and and this is their this is their experiment. It, uh, I, I'll just leave it saying it agrees quantitatively with this theory, and so we get some estimate of the deformation potential coupling is I think it's a order of third electron volt, and uh, then when you put the third electron volt, you get a lambda which is very very small. This lambda is a dimensionless effective electron phonon coupling that comes with the theory of superconductivity made famous by uh, great late uh, uh, Macmillan. And this is essentially zero. It's you know, 100 microkelvin or 50 microkelvin, something like that. Now you can get superconductivity. There's a very good paper by Efetov, uh, not Efetov, Chubukov, uh, and and Rahul Nandkishore and, and Levitov, where the idea was that if you can push the density all the way to the van of singularity of real graphene, which is almost 10 to the power 15 per square centimeter doping, then you'll get superconductivity. And there's an interesting story about this paper. In fact, that's what Efetov's thesis was supposed to be. He was supposed to dope graphene to the actual Hanov singularity of graphene and C superconductivity coming from electron electron interaction. But what happened, they could not dope that high. They could only go to the number 14. And then Philip saw our paper and called me and I said, ah, oh, we cannot go all the way there, but maybe we can 
see this T4 behavior, which nobody has ever seen clearly. You know, the block brunizon behavior T4, you cannot really see in regular metals. It's very difficult to see. Since our density is very high, this temperature is pretty high. It's of the order of 50 Kelvin, 100 Kelvin. So you can clearly see it's going from linear into to the power four. So they, you know, very smart experimentalists. They, they snatched victory from the jaws of defeat. They did not see support. This is a very highly cited paper because now phonons are very important. So, so we know everything about graphene. Uh, uh, Can I ask a, yeah. a question? Right. Yeah. yeah. Because what's plotted is delta rho, right? Yeah. So yeah. normally there's a residual. Right. Right. And so there's a question of how big is the temperature dependent part of the resistivity in comparison to the residual. Yeah. And the related question is just how does disorder play with the block Brunei's in effect? Yeah. So, the, yeah, very good question. These are, of course, things I have studied at great length. It just so happens that this is after graphene has already become very, very clean. So this issue, I don't remember the residual resistivity, it's but minuscule, okay? So this issue doesn't apply here, but this is very important in semiconductor. And by the way, this interplay can give you all kinds of non-monotonicity, okay? And we have many papers doing that. And these kind of things have been seen in holes in gallium arsenide and so on, because as you know, there could be linear in T dependence coming from disorder and this, and it's very interesting. And, and these things in gallium arsenide is reasonably well established. In graphene, disorder due to temperature dependence is, is not there because it doesn't have the Fermi surface anomaly because it did arc. Okay, so 2K disorder scattering doesn't have strong temperature dependence. It's not important. I don't remember the residual but it was not an issue because Philip, of course, you know, but it's a, it's, it's a good question. Okay, in some other materials, it, it could matter. So now we need to take that graphene and convert into twisted bilayer graphene. So twisted bilayer graphene, this is the picture. And basically, this is, we use the band structure, same band structure everybody uses. This is the McDonald band structure. And this is a calculation of the graphene velocity, graphene Fermi velocity as a function of the twist angle. This is this famous magic angle. This is the famous magic angle where in this zeroth order theory, the velocity goes to zero, okay? Now, this is the Fermi velocity of graphene. Uh, this is the phonon velocity of graphene. So our, I will do a theory which would not be valid over here because you know Migdal's approximation will fail when the velocity is lower. But I have a theory which is reasonable over here. Monolayer graphene is somewhere up here, okay? Way up, okay, like five degrees or something. And there are all these symmetries that we're taking. I'll come to symmetry later on. Depending on the twist, the velocity could be suppressed by a factor of 100. This is the important thing you need to remember. And then we first calculated, our paper is mainly first on resistivity, which is the question Andrea Young asked me. I actually did not want to get into twisted bilayer graphene because as late, I was going through a huge personal crisis and could not think of anything new. But since he called me, I knew immediately, I mean, literally I finished the calculation that evening that, that he called me and I could just immediately get resistivity as a function of twist angle. All that is coming in is this. This is basically this formula recycled doing the full calculation in between, recycled now with this or McDonald uh, band structure for graphene velocity. So as you can see on this plot, the monolayer graphene will be basically along the horizontal axis. And as the angle goes down, resistivity should go up enormously, okay? And D rho DT should show this huge change, 100 to all the way one ohm per Kelvin as you go from small twist angle, let's say 1.1 degree at magic angle in our theory diverges to, uh, to regular graphene, okay? And this agreed remarkably with, with, uh, with the experiment, okay? Right, so can you say um, which phonon has what? Oh, we have, oh, I should have said that. Everything that I'll tell you about is just regular acoustic phonon in the layer, okay? We take into account coupling by that between the two layers that doesn't change anything. There is no optical phonon in our theory. Alan McDonald has a paper claiming optical phonon gives a superconductivity, but I would say that Alan himself doesn't really do that. And Feng Cheng Wu, who did the work, who came to me, you know, they, I, in fact, I did not talk about superconductivity. I thought that they, obviously they used acoustic phonons, you know, I didn't read the paper, but the optical phonon, but optical so, phonon doesn't con contribute anything. Sure, but, but then there was all this other discussion of phonons associated with twisting and Reading correct. And that. So correct. Not, we have looked into some of those effects. This is these are some of the things that you know that that uh, Andre and Binler yeah. talked about. We looked into some. We had extensive discussions with them. Some of those physics is included. Main thing is that 
if because of zone folding, huge gaps open up in the phonon spectrum, then there will be changes in this theory, but there is no evidence that happens, okay? So it seems that twisting has a strong effect on electronic spectrum and not such a strong effect on phonons. More Experiment. Electron phonon coupling. Electron phonon coupling goes up in the simple theory because a VF V phonon comes in the bottom. There, there's no effect beyond. Oh no 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 no. You, 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 oh no. You 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 bring up a very good point. D the basic deformation potential coupling most likely changes, and I'll come to that when I talk about superconductivity. Okay? Because uh, I don't know if you know this deformation potential coupling, which basically means if you apply pressure, how much the bands change. It's not known even for a material like silicon or gallium arsenide very well. Okay, experiments is. So it's often set by comparing with transport experiments. And Andy, answering the question, we do need larger value of D than what it is for monolayer graphene. And this is an open question. Some first principles person here perhaps can do this calculation. And referees bring up this question and it's a, it's a justified question, but I'm talking about it, okay? Can you just comment or clarify why optical phonons are not important at all? You High energy, optical uh, phonons, yeah. Like, there are many situations when the optical, I mean, not in BCS or not in MGDAL, if the, if the form of energy mm -hmm. is larger than the Fermi energy, but if it's slower, it yeah. doesn't have to be a quick Yeah, right? no, the here we looked into it carefully, it just doesn't contribute. It's not like I discarded them without considering them. They come into play when I talk about untwisted structures, we include that, and sometimes that enhances TC slightly. Okay. okay? So we have included them in some of the situations. Okay. Okay. And I have another small okay. question. Your theory in principle would not work at the magic angle, right? Because uh, or even close to it. Our theory, I, let me go back. This is a very important uh, issue. So I, I want to emphasize, I do not want to say anything. I don't want to exaggerate, okay? Our theory really doesn't work beyond this point at all. Okay. But even close to this point, you can say our theory probably doesn't work very well, okay? So do you speculate about what's going to happen there? Or you no, no, no. I think, I, I think what happens is that, you know, I mean, I mean look, the thing is that usually a theory doesn't fail just because somebody's theorem did not apply, right? I mean, if you look at normal metals, there is a small coupling parameter, RS is seven. Yeah. But if you do a calculation leading order, dynamical screening, so-called GW approximation, you produce everything well. If there is no phase transition, things do not just go haywire in one second. So I believe our theory applies, but I cannot make this claim. So results I'll show you, I'll stay above this point, okay? okay I, if you answer to your question, I believe nothing changes. So, you know, so this was, this is, and, you know, Sandria was very happy and he actually wrote a nature physics saying electron phonon coupling induced uh, enhancement in, in, in resistivity, okay? Uh, so it agrees reasonably well, and, and oh, let me just go back. So this is data then from uh, Pablo's group. They had a competing paper at the same time, resistivity. <laughs> and this is our theory and we found it agrees, but. I don't think this group agrees with us. They uh, interpreted a strange metal, uh, everything unknown. Where it's coming from, we don't know. Uh, and, you know, so, so, uh, and I think that I'm going to come back to that. This issue is not completely resolved, meaning what I'm saying, and since I'm going to talk about superconductivity, we wrote a recent paper where we looked at this question very carefully because of some new data FETA has published, very careful temperature dependent data, really, really careful temperature dependent data. So we got the data from them and used actual numbers and did our electron phonon calculation very carefully. And what I'm confident is that all the linearity they see above 10 Kelvin is coming from electron phonon interaction. But sometimes they see linearity, look at this, the linearity goes all the way down to like 100 millikelvin. Within our theory, that's very difficult to explain, but we are not doing a full calculation, including the whole band structure and how the Van Hoff singularity moves around. Very kind of things really should be done here. It's, we are not very good in doing it. This work is very slow, uh, but it looks like we can extend it from 10K down to maybe you know even 500 millikelvin. But there is a question, if the linearity goes all the way to 50 millikelvin, something else may be going on. And then that brings up the old question that is very familiar to the older people here, Andy and I, that in cuprets, it's linear sometimes, not always, sometimes over a very large range. And some of it could be electron phonon, but at very low temperatures, unlikely to be electron phonon, then why is the linearity always the same? You know, why should two different mechanisms conspire to give you the same slope? So there may be a mystery here. I don't want to undermine the importance that our theory typically does not give linearity going below 10K because that depends on block and temperature. Okay. Uh, 
that little linear, it seems like it's curving down. Oh, when you go to high temperature, what happens is that it actually comes down because then uh, that's totally understood. That's because electrons are excited to higher bands and so on. Octet includes those things. Okay. So above, you cannot really take the after, above 50K that it comes down actually, okay? Because electrons are going to some other band. So, so but, um, just, I, I just want to internalize something. Yeah. So you have less than three decades of a power law. I would just say it's just a curve. It's linear to the naked eye, but it's not really a linear in the critical. Have time. you seen linearity in a solid state system, which is more than three decades? I haven't. Yeah, so I don't make a big deal out of it. Yeah, so I mean, I'm saying that this is a statement, but then there is no scaling anything in solid state physics at all. No, Nobody should. The, ma the magnitude is kind of interesting. Is it too, like, the issue, I, I, I wasn't around, but like, the issues of resistivity saturation versus non saturation. For instance. Yeah, this What's is. What's the mean path there? If it's. Oh, it's, it's very long. Very long. This is what you are thinking about would happen. Yeah, it's yeah, yes, all consistent. Yeah, totally consistent. Yeah, absolutely. All I'm saying is low temperature, I cannot claim electron phonon interaction explains the uh, linearity completely. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Uh, over here, I think even Pablo agrees that, you know, but then I have a problem. Suppose there is a mechanism here and there's some totally different mechanism here. I don't see any reason linearity should be. And this question, by the way, this is why I have not written a paper saying in Q plus linearity comes from electron phonon. Because I know I cannot explain the whole region. So, but this would be everybody's problem. So something is going on we don't understand, okay? Sure, so may I ask yeah. two questions? Please, now? please. So the first is uh, the different cur color curves in the experiment yes. correspond to densities, as right. I understand it. Yes, this, this from is 1.2 right. to 1.9. Correct, roughly. correct. Okay, and so if I sit at a fixed temperature, yes. there's a substantial change yes. in the resistivity as mm -hmm. a function of depth. Yes. Density. Yes. Um, where does that come from? Because if I look at the theory calculations, right, the change is much smaller. No, no, no. The, right. This is all. This is all. All oh, shifted. Thing, right? Yeah. This is all shifted with respect to each other. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Because to show them, uh, trust me. This, this kind of. Uh, let me show you the. Let me show you direct comparison. Okay. Uh, okay and and let, let's go there. Okay. Let me just go there. I, I have the direct comparison. This is the. This is the summary of the results. This is. Uh, so, what we plot here, is. D rho dt as a function of twist angle. This is data, okay, as a function of twist angle. These are the data from the, the from Santa, Santa Barbara group, okay? This is the Columbia UCSB collaboration. And as you can see, this question come up, came up. When you're far away, we kind of explain well, but when you go to go close, this is, you know, and, and so this is the original theory with the original D uh, where the value is given, okay? Uh, to get agreement, and this is what I'm telling, get agreement, you have to shift it, get agreement over the whole thing. If we shift it a little bit, the agreement improves. That means we need larger D by about 25%. This is what I was telling you, okay? The other possible theory is not very accurate. We should not do this, but we give this plot to give an idea to, to uh, what extent D changes, okay? So, and you can see this point, you know, with the, there the theory doesn't work at all. So, and, and the density dependence is very weak. Okay. It really is. Okay. Uh, I mean, it's what, what the theory is. Okay. So, it's flat band enhanced electron phonon coupling. And if you estimate, just if you take the Macmillan formula, put lambda, you find lambda now has become one. So, from 0 0.01, it has become one, 100 times higher, and it goes in the exponential. So, now just simple theory, which is what our original paper had, this is one thing. Okay. And this is the part. Uh, if I didn't like. Can I, yeah. Can I answer this? Um, yeah. How does um, an experiment TC or superconductivity depend on the density of the carriers? Well, I already showed you what doping. It depends on the doping. So at some dopings, there is no superconductivity. Some doping, there is superconductivity. But, but generally, could I, should I think about the, the density of the carriers to be small when there's superconductivity or it can be? Yeah, sample it's, it depends on sample. Very small, there is disorder. So, you know, because very close to the uh, cone. Basically, in our picture, this picture, electron phonon, superconductive is everywhere. It has some dependence on density, but not very strong, because our theory right now, this theory that I'm showing is very simple. It does not include all the Van singularity. Maybe this question is better addressed when I show you more results, okay? So now I'm going to quickly go through how, uh, you know, this is rather simple stuff, but nobody thought about it before us. So graphene has all these values and all this chirality. So if you work out just the symmetry of the system, then you find that very easily you can have situations 
unconventional pairing given by phonons because it can be intervalley or intravalley. And just from phonon, you can have singlet and triplet and the leading order theory there in fact degenerate, okay? And this is where somebody is asking about optical phonons. Optical phonons split these degenerates, okay? Because they don't obey the same symmetry, okay? So, so we pointed out something that, I mean, to me, it's almost look trivial, but nobody knew before. A lot of our referees say you cannot get triplet, but you can. You have this, you know, you have this depending on intra or inter valley, you have this symmetry. So phonons can give you higher order superconductivity here. Okay. And I mean, I'm not going to go through it. It's not very germane for our thing. It's very simple, but you have worked on all the symmetries. And when you do the calculation, you include these symmetries. Now let me, uh, 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 you know, so uh, move on and come to more serious calculations, okay? So this is very recent work. That work was just the introduction, what we did in 2018 already, or 2018 to 2019. Then something radical happened. I hope all of you know. Andrea Young calls me one day and says, literally, that you may be right all along. I have now seen superconductivity in untwisted graphene just regular graphene, but trilayer graphene. Untwisted trilayer graphene has seen superconductivity. So there is the mode of physics, there is the enhancement of electron electron interaction. And, uh, and in fact, he kept it a secret. It was announced on a, in a conference, in a Zoom conference, you know, in honor of my late wife. And he announced it there and Quantum Magazine wrote an article on this thing. And then the paper came out in Nature. That got us going, and I said, now we have to do a serious calculation, kind of calculation that you know CCQ does. You know, none of this kind of theory calculation I do without details, numerical thing. So we said we have to solve the gap equation with the actual band structure. So that's what I'm going to go through now, because now we're going to talk about, and we now did it for everything. Okay. So you all know what the gap, and then we estimated it. Now I'm showing you the results for this answer to your question. The, the density question. So this is for us. First, I'm showing you our detailed calculation, including the band structure, full band structure for twisted bilayer graphene. So this answered the question that Andy asked before, and you asked, how do things depend on density? So here, what you're saying is just super electron phonon interaction, symmetry, and van of singularity interplay. Okay. So all these peaks going away, this all depends on the band structure. Okay. So this is a numerical calculation with the full band structure. Okay. But this is still twisted by layer graphene. Now I'm going to talk about ABC trilayer graphene. This is, you know, this is seminal work because it shows that this feeling people had, you know, people have been talking, Holovic has been talking about it for a long time, that graphene may be superconducting. And people have seen telltale signs that many big thick layers of graphene sometimes are superconducting things. There was something there. So this band structure is highly tunable by displacement field, by applying electric field. And they find. It, there are a lot of symmetry breaking here. They find that near the van of singularity, there is stone instability. There is a flavor polarization. You know, Andrea is an expert in doing this thing. The spin polarized states are confirmed experimentally. Okay. So now the question is, but remember that I'm like totally set on electron phonon. Okay. So the question now is, if our theory cannot explain this, I would have written a paper saying, it's, you know, Occam's razor says it cannot be different mechanism. You know, I cannot just change mechanism whenever I want. Okay. That's that's not theoretical physics. It could happen in life, but I don't like that. But the point is that there are one of singularities in trilayer graphene. Band structure is not trivial. So there is large density of state. So maybe there is superconductivity. But there is ferromagnetic spin fluctuations also. So there could be spin fluctuation related to superconductivity also. So which one wins? This question is not com completely settled. You know, I mean, our paper came out, but I would not say, so this is the experimental data. I'm not going to go through the experimental data because I don't even remember all the details. You have to trust. Andrea, that he did things right, and he found fragile superconductivity, but we see on the order of a Kelvin, you know, at very specific points. So this is the dense Fermi surface. This is the calculated band structure Fermi surface the density of states of trilayer graphene. Okay, so you can see the van of singularities, but superconductivity happens near it, but not exactly as it is. And this is always was Pablo's point that if it's the kind of electron phonon mechanism we are talking about. Superconductivity should be just around this. So we did a full calculation. I'll give away the story. What we find, no, it depends on some integrals. So superconductivity lasts over some range. It doesn't just disappear right beyond this. Okay, it's, it's more stable than that. So we then do a calculation. It's a Yang Zi Cho did a you know huge calculation doing band projection and then using the 
BCS thing, I'll, I'll come to whether we do a full Elias bar or not. And so this is a linearized gap equation. I'm still talking about BCS. Then we solved it numerically. Uh, and what we find is that superconductivity, which is what is actually in the same regime where he's finding ferromagnetism, okay? But if this means that it has to be phonons, if superconducting ferromagnetism are together, if superconducting is near ferromagnetic phase, then you have a lot of fluctuations, then paramagnets are possible, okay? But then phonons may also be, so it's a complicated situation, okay? Both are allowed, which unit is you have to do a question and then you have to, you have to do a calculation and you have to trust your calculation, okay? Yeah, yeah. Right. No, no, it was, it was suppressed outside. It was more in the ferromagnetic regime. But in Barnall system is the opposite, okay? So this is, so it's very confusing, okay? I mean, here, it's more phonon, but in Barnall is more spin fluctuation. One more question. Are yeah. you graphing the energy to reach the band of doping, which is two big gauge? No, no, that's for regular graphene. That's what I'm Yeah, yeah, regular graphene is like number 15. Nobody has Probably. achieved it. No, 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 no. no. People tried all these, they developed these techniques, electrolytic groping, but they could only go only halfway, okay? So this is the density of states. Now do a TC calculation. This is the, you know, the, the self consistent BCS. And you can see that, yeah, Van Hove is where the superconductivity peaks, but it doesn't disappear right away. So the argument that there is superconductivity far away from Van Hove, so it cannot be electron phonon is just incorrect. And, you know, this depends a little bit on the grid. Yangzi is very careful uh, and, you know, it has converged, but not completely, but, you know, I, I was happy publishing this. And so this is, this is the result. This is electron phonon. And if, you know, to what extent, you know, this is the important thing here, to what extent it agrees with the experiment? Experimentally, he finds one and a half roughly, okay? And, uh, uh, and we argued here that, uh, that maybe mu star effect reduces slightly, but, you know, it's reasonable, reasonable. So you can get TC1K in ABC trilayer graphene without more A and both in S, S and F are allowed, okay? All right. So that's the story for, uh, and I, you know, there's just a lot of subtleties on it. He sees two different superconducting phase, SC1 and SC2, he calls them. And uh, all of that are consistent I'm showing, but I don't want to go into all this nitty gritty details because there are two other systems I want to talk about. Barnal bilayer graphene and twisted trilayer graphene, okay? Because, I mean, the subject is incredibly rich, okay? And, and, and not everything is figured out by any means, okay? We have just worked on electron phonon. And this Hubbard model thing excites me a lot, actually. Okay. So mu star would change number, but you know it's all order one Kelvin. And uh, so this is you know this is the superconducting one. This is superconducting two. This is the stonar instability. So you, you, it's it's very dizzying. Yes, please. So if I if I wanted to ask about superfluid stiffness of that, um, which one are you talking about? The experiment or theory? The theory. Theory. Yeah. Uh, how many bands are playing? Oh, this is this is all in the in the ground state in the, just one band. So yeah. there's nothing interesting that's supposed to. No, th those easy. bands are sufficiently far that it doesn't matter, right? Yeah. Okay. okay. Now, uh, uh, you know, so it's 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 the agreement is let's say reasonable for such a complicated system. Okay. So long time ago, we pointed out that you know that that graphene we did originally monolayer, but you can have multi-layer graphene and you can calculate now and derode it is one ohm per Kelvin because again, it's very small uh, because the electron phonon coupling is very weak. And we calculate for all these different materials. We can now compare and our prediction is, and this is a very important point, everybody should pay Our prediction is that there should be, you know, a linear, linear resistivity in this system, a linear resistivity in this system, if it's phonons at some temperature. So the question immediately comes up, our competitors who want it to be electron electron interaction, like it is Berg, very, very smart guy. Uh, it is Berg, Mike Zelotel, or two very, very smart guys, okay? So they wrote a paper where they said, oh, look, our theory, you know, they don't see, they don't see linear uh, resistivity in temperature. But the problem is Andrea only went up to 20 Kelvin. We have now done this theory very carefully and resistivity should be linear around 50 Kelvin. It's a very big question, seeing linear resistivity with the correct slope that our electron phonon coupling is. So that is an open question. So um, uh, he has promised you do the experiment. And then we calculated how electric field will modify things. As you know, electric field changes the band structure. 
we can calculate. So these are various gaps in, that electric field introduces, and eventually, at, you know, it, it it should be suppressed. And some of these things, it, it, this is we did it because experimentalists did it, and it agrees with experiment. It's suppressed by the electric field. Okay. Um, and we find that in the DP channel, this is our ASF chain, S and F channel, S and F are the superconducting one and superconducting two. I don't remember which one is what, but our calculated TC in DP channels is basically zero. So those channels don't show up. This is a quantitative question. There is no fundamental reason why they don't show up. They don't show up. And any theory that you know, uh, does these things has to, has to study the symmetry properties also. Okay, but that's not where the story ends. Then Andrea calls me six months after that. Now he has, he seems to have seen uh, a superconducted Bernal bilayer graphene, which is the standard bilayer, okay? Not twisted. Okay. I mean, twisted bilayer graphene is a variant on this, but this is not twisted. Here, the most important thing you need to take home message, TC is very low. Look at TC, it's like order of 20 millikelvin. Before it was like one to two Kelvin. This is good because things should depend very strongly on band structure, okay? And the band structure changes completely. This, these are band structures. Again, we have to calculate band structure. I've become a band theorist, I'm very happy, okay? So, okay. I have persuaded my younger collaborators to become band theorists, that's actually that statement. So this is band structure, it's very different from what it was before. We do the same, I'm summarizing the whole results here for you because I, you know, I was not sure how I'll be doing with time because there's one other thing I wanna talk about. The calculation is very similar to the last one, but there is one difference here because TC is so low. Adding mu star in the last calculation change our TC from four Kelvin to two, two Kelvin. Here TC being this low, I insisted that we must include mu star effect, meaning the repulsive interaction effect. Now, first there is a screening effect just coming from the gates. You have gates. So this is just the you know, undergraduate image charge effect that, and you can derive this formula because there are many, many, many met charge, there are two gates. And you immediately find the actual Coulomb interaction one over Q is suppressed by tangent hyperbolic Q over two. All our calculations in bilayer graphene and in uh, TMDs include, this is our Coulomb interaction because there are always gates, okay? But this gives rise to very small mu star. So this is not, this doesn't explain experiment, you get, you know, you get, look at, look at the TC we are getting here. TC we are getting is of the order of one Kelvin. And look at the experiment. This is uh, 40 millikelvin, right? So this is a huge, huge, huge difference, okay? Only thing I, within our electron phonon interaction model, and, you know, maybe if one does Hubbard model type calculation that Andy was alluding to that I certainly was not familiar with, maybe the two systems will have very different TC directly. Okay, but within our model, only thing I could think of is a mu star effect is very strong. So I said, we have to include screening by the carriers themselves. And that we know how to do it in ladder approximation. So we did that, we included that. And uh, amazingly, TC did go down um, uh, to, to almost the experimental values. Okay, I mean, I mean, you know, after including mu star effect, we get results which are, I mean, not quite, but, but close to it. So, you know, so this is what the story is now. What's, what's lambda here? Because there's no, uh, DF is not suppressed. There's no magic angle. No. So, so, so the lambda is the lambda for regular graphene here. Yeah. One. Yeah, yeah. But, but remember the band structure, the fan of singularity is what okay. is giving the physics. Okay, so that's absolutely correct. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so if you take an electron gas model or, or, or Dirac gas model, you're not going to get any superconductivity. Here, okay? Now the last topic, which I want to talk about, because this is the electron electron, I said phonons are not. So this is the not. You know, these two groups, Santa Barbara, Columbia, and MIT compete. So Pablo came up with a paper, it's all in nature, everything, where he saw supercon with twisted trilayer graphene, more or less the same time these experiments are going, twisted trilayer graphene. So here he finds the band structure is highly tunable by displacement field. And he claimed it's a spin triplet superconductive with electron electron interaction. And why he knows that? Heck, he applies a field A Tesla and this superconductive anything becomes stronger. Okay, so, you know, he calls me and says, can you explain this? Okay, first let me tell you, electron phonon interaction cannot explain this. We did the calculation, it just doesn't agree at all. Okay, so uh, Yangzi was uh, very uh, uh, depressed. I said, well, let's, let's just do what Chibukov does in, 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 in you know, very nice theory. 
will assume that there has been fluctuations since we know and, and we are going to be a, what is called a spin fermion model. So this is not a microscopic model like I was telling about electron phonon interaction. Here is a more phenomenological model. We assume there are spin fluctuations that couple and then we do the calculation. This is, you know, has been done many, many times. And we, you know, this is the phase diagram, experimental phase diagram. This is, you know, the paper came out, I think in 2021, yeah, in nature. It's very complicated, but you can see superconductivity. And uh, here the superconductivity is not peaked at the kind of singularity. So this is what, you know, Pablo was triumphant. He said, it cannot be phonon strong because he was like really, really happy. And uh, uh, so we did, you know, it's, we did the calculation. I'm going to show you the result. It's, this is, uh, and uh, it's main idea of superconductivity spin triplet here. Normal state is seen unpolarized. Pairing from electron correlation, but we cannot do the kind of Hubbard model calculation or anything like that Andy was already doing. We really cannot do it. I'm not being modest. We do not have big enough computers. We don't have the skill. Uh, and so we did this, a phenomenal spin fermion model. And uh, so here we you know, invoke that there are some spin fluctuations, which is giving rise to superconductivity. And uh, so you know, some kind of paramagnons. Since there is ferromagnetic state nearby, it's not an absurd thing, but you know, it's, it's, it's a phenomenological model. And then you do the same calculation that I was telling you about with this spin triplet, with this ferromagnetic fluctuation. And uh, we can take into account the symmetry, including spin fluctuation bosonic component easily because they've already done it phonons. And then we can identify which values are pairing, what should be the symmetries, P and if wave, because you can have inter sublattice, inter sublattice, both are spin triplet. It's a bit dizzying. Then we mapped into a BCS model. Here, the coupling is K independent, basically a Hubbard U type coupling. And, uh, you know, and uh, we, what we found here, the TC really is not that relevant because it's a phenomenological model. But what we found, this is the important thing. If we're pairing dominance over P wave. So, you know, that is true here also for phonons, and here is for spin fluctuation. So this was our bottom line, and uh, 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 and then we can go further forward, and uh, we can solve the problem exactly for the just if we just keep the F wave. Okay, and um, we did that. We can calculate all the free energy and find out how that will change in magnetic field. So we made a lot of predictions, and to my total amazement. Uh, this is not an important paper, but this got accepted in PRL because you know we kind of like, I mean, I think the important conclusion is, 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 is this thing that even for this, you get a for pairing. And once you say for pairing, we can solve the problem exactly. And then we can give some idea about what would happen in the presence of small Zeeman field and uh, what the issue is. So, oh, my timing is okay. So I will end, I have no summary. I'll end with a picture of, uh, I didn't refer to anything. I didn't mention my co-authors in the beginning. So you, if you are interested, this is, uh, these are all our superconductivity papers on graphene, okay? 10 papers. And right now what we are doing, a huge calculation going on, taking very long, very long, but I'm determined. I made a, I made a vow that I'm never asking a student or a postdoc the status of a calculation, because when I ask that they get very scared, they think I'm applying pressure on them. So, so six months ago, I was told it's almost ready. So what we are doing is this. We are doing the full resistivity calculation in all these systems with the full band structure. Okay, it's kind of the DMFT calculations you guys do, but for electron phonon interaction, complete calculation. My real goal is to see whether we can push the low T linear coming from phonons all the way down to like 50 millikelvin. It goes down, but I don't think it goes down to 50 millikelvin. And this paper apparently is almost ready and we should be posting it soon. And in fact, I'm much more interested in this resistivity than in superconductivity. Um, uh, and we'll see where it goes because you know, I want to be able to make a concrete statement. It is phonon or it is not phonon. Right now, as I said, I think it's 90% phonons and I'm gonna stop there. And thank you very much for your patience, okay? All right, thank you very much for this interesting and inspiring talk. So uh, questions first from the audience in the room and if there are people uh, watching on the internet, write your questions in the Q&A or the chat and I'll get to them. Yeah, please. 
instruments don't work. No, I was just wondering in the resistivity calculations, are those including all of the phonons? No, just uh, it, the, the, uh, the resistivity calculation that's going on now is including all the phonons. But everything I showed you is just acoustic phonons. Okay. 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 And then uh, I also wanted to ask so you kind of flashed it, the different stackings of graphene right. seem to have different uh, power law dependencies on temperature. Like there was a T to the sixth and a T to the fourth. Correct. That was the main point of that, that paper that, that these power laws depend very much. But I should emphasize. Those calculations are for very low doping because those are regular graphene. So van of singularity physics was not included there. So that's where doing the whole, we are doing that paper now with full van of physics. Okay. Some of those things have been seen at low doping, but I think much of this behavior will change now you're including the full van of physics. Okay. So so at low doping, the different power laws just come from different band structure value Correct. states. Correct. Okay. Correct. And where the power loss change also come from. Okay. Yeah. okay, other questions? Sure. So, John, so maybe to follow up a little bit on cuprates. Yes, please. Uh, so, what is the precise? Uh, so you're saying that phonons shouldn't be ignored. So possibly you're saying a stronger statement than that. I am making a slightly stronger statement. Uh -huh. I'm saying, and I'll be very precise, you know, I'm not being facetious. And I have had long discussion with somebody who is, uh, well, I don't know if Jennifer knows him, somebody I respect enormously, Phil Allen at, at Stony Brook, you know, who is an old friend, knows more about electron phonon interaction, this kind of superconductivity than anybody else. And he always told me that I should do a serious calculation. Not all aspects of resistivity there can be explained by phonons, but it cannot be ruled out. And I said, I'm not insane. I'm not doing a calculation in high TC and claiming that it's phonons. The situation is this, it's a very complicated material. There's so many phonon modes. And what I learned from my material science friends is also very disordered, you know, very homogeneous. So you may have phonons you don't even know about, you know, local vibration and so on. So it's not easy to do it. But if you look at the raw numbers, first this statement that is linear down to very low temperature is very misleading in two ways. One is linear down to very low temperature in very high magnetic field. Now I'm not saying magnetic field will change the phonon structure very much and so on, but that's that's not the system we are talking about. Second, many experiments do not see linear down to very low temperature. People just quote the ones which do. I have, I have looked at 500 resistivity papers. You know, In some, it doesn't go to very low temperature. In some, it does. It's definitely not universal. What it is universal, that there is a regime you know, where it's linear. And electron phonon coupling that you need, if you just do a backup the envelope thing, is of, it's just strong coupling, age of the strong, strong coupling superconductivity. You need something like 1.5 to get the correct resistivity. What you cannot get is going down to below 10 Kelvin because you know that the, if you convert into a free electron model, effective free electron model, then the cuprate electron density is of the order of 10 to the power 20 to 10 to the power 21 per cubic centimeter. Okay. So instead of 10 to the power 23, it's 10 to the power 21. So that's a factor of 100. And you know, in case that's cube root, that is still like a factor of five or six. Okay, so that means if aluminum is linear down to 50k, a cuprate could be linear down to 5k just from the Fermi energy difference. So what I'm saying is that detailed realistic calculation is needed, and this kind of thing was only done in the early 90s. Phil Allen had a paper where he said it cannot be ruled out. Then Warren Pickett had a paper saying it can be ruled out. And then the interest moved away from all these things. You know, all these phases came out and people haven't done it. So all I'm saying is that I don't want to do this calculation because, you know, it's whoever does it, it will never get a job. I mean, so, uh, but it should be done. But there, I have this feeling, having done a lot of electron phonon <laughs> calculation, that not everything can be explained by electron phonon. Now, Steve Kivelson tells me that he also thinks electron phonon may play a role. The real mystery is that you have many, many phonons. They're like, you know, five different atoms in unit cell, okay? Why is the slope always the same? You know, you think there should be little kinks. And so he thinks some kind of large end theory can resolve that. And I have not thought deeply about it. So all I'm saying is a precise statement. Electron phonon interaction has not been ruled out decisive there, okay? For, for registry. That's all I'm saying. Uh, may I make a point about uh, yeah. Yeah. perhaps purity of samples? And, yes. Uh, you know, if you look at the theoretical calculations, every linear resistivity, everything that gives you a linear regime, uh, if you just 
you extrapolate that to zero temperature, you get a strongly negative intercept. Yes. Right. Yes. And <laughs> every measurement in both graphene and correlated material does not have that negative intercept. Correct. The question is, is that simply yeah. a disorder offset that's pushing things up? Or is there something else? That, that this is a very important question, but it could be connected to inhomogeneity also. That's, you know, it, 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 there is something we don't understand. This is, you know, one, one, there are many reasons. This is one reason that I'm not comfortable saying is just electron form. There are too many mysteries there. And people, when people just say linear down to low temperature, non fermi liquid, they're ignoring all what important one Andy just mentioned that it doesn't go to zero, it's negative. Okay. So that's why I'm not comfortable saying phonon, but I have not seen anything that decisively rules it up. I don't know if this answers your question, but this is all I can say. Okay. So, I think Jennifer had a question oh, for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, I think there was some experiment at Caltech where they put tungsten diselenide on top of TBG to induce spinorbit coupling, and that made the superconducting dome extend over wider angles. So I was just wondering if the spinorbit coupling plays any role or like proves any kind of mechanism, or if you rule, view it as just suppressing some kind of ferromagnetic. Or uh, uh, my, I, I don't know this experiment, yeah. but my answer right now would be just depressing the the, the competing phases. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I do not see spinorbit coupling doing anything. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I really think that just is suppressing the competing. Yeah. I mean, I really think that if they can suppress the insulating phase, it's all a superconductor. Even you look at the experiments as they evolve, it's just clear, you know. It's effect of data, you look at it. It's just all blue, and there is a set of measures zero of brown, you know? So, so I think I have to look at the paper and then we'll think about it. But my quick answer to you is that they're suppressing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thanks. Please. Um, yeah, I completely forgot about the negative intercept issue because mm -hmm. I used to kind of just in my pet peeve like quite a few years ago. And, you know, not being in the middle of this, mm -hmm. I kind of feel like if the intercept is negative, that suggests to you, at least that suggested mm -hmm. to me that the low temperature expansion is just misleading. Absolutely. You shouldn't take it. Mm -hmm. and, Maybe you should do high temperature expansion. Yeah, you should. So Other possibly, yeah. I have papers about that, yeah. but I, you know, they, they never connected to experiments. So I'm, I'm just wondering, but if, when you see a negative intercept, what's your instinct? Uh, you know, this is of course a question I have, I have, I have faced like this question several times. And first, my honest answer is that I do not know of any regular theory which will give that, but I can create that is in homogeneity. So you have many different, uh, many different patches. You have percolation. And you, you could get any result you want doing that, okay? But I really, and, and the guy who grows samples for Rick Green, he once came to see me in my office and told me, these systems are really bad, completely non-uniform. And, you know, it's like, I can never, this percentage, because I wanted to know this percentage of different materials, he said it's no meaning because it's global. Stuff. But you, look, you have asked a very good question. I really do not have anything more to say than what Andy said. Andy, do you have a thought what uh, may be happening, the negative intercept, what causes it? Yeah, it, I mean, in, in the theoretical calculation, it's very simple. And you can see it if you do a high temperature expansion, the leading curve of temperature, and then there's a negative correction. Yeah. Right? What it, the point is that, that at low temperature, you have a power law with a high power. So it starts out at zero, and you have a power law with a high power of T. And then that folds over to mm -hmm. something linear. And if you just think about how these things have to connect, um, that's more or less. How yeah, but that is a trivial answer. But, 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 yeah, answer. yeah, I mean, but that, that is the answer. The, theory, yeah. the question is what's happening in materials, mm -hmm. right? There's no theoretical issue. No, no. I mean, if it's just a question of the extrapolation that way, that it is going like this, like that, and then you get a negative, that's, um, you know, I hope it's something more profound, but maybe that's what it is. Something I did not even know. I mean, I knew, but I didn't realize that it's a universal mechanism. So it's almost always true, you're saying. I think, no, no, no. I, I, I'm not saying it's almost always true. I'm saying that within any of the standard electron phonon models within the Migdal approximation, mm -hmm. it's true. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's absolutely true. That is absolutely true. And, and I do yeah. think that that's absolutely that true. Yeah. the offset question is not trivial. There are a lot of cases in which you see linear resistance with approximately constant slope if you change something like doping. Yeah. And the magnitude changes, and you yeah. just don't get that out of electron. <laughs> I, I totally agree with you. This, yeah, this is what I said, that this slope thing, and you are pointing out even something more, but for me, if there are many phonon nodes and your temperature is changing by a factor of 10, you should, more phonons should come in. And only way I can explain that by waving hands and say, maybe one phonon has the most dominant coupling, but this is not an acceptable theory. One should do a calculation, you know? And what you are saying when you change doping, slope remains the same, but the magnitude changes. Very hard to see that's how that's going to come from electron. 
So there are mysteries. This is what I meant when I said I'm not comfortable saying it's electron phonon. Okay, so we're there. I think this young man has a question. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just the last question. There are some experiments that um, are reporting that there might be a pseudo gap phenomenology. In, in, in the, twisted or. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. do you have yeah. any comments? Or it's, comments? From it's from MIT, right? Um, I, I can pull them up. Yeah. I yeah. Don't yeah, well, I mean, the thing is that I think it's a. I cannot rule it out, but I think it's a. I think it's not good. I think it's really, I do not want twisted bilayer graphene to be a graphene copy of cuprates. Why Santhil and Pablo want this, I do not understand. My goal is here that we said bilayer graphene becomes like quantum Hall effect. We agree on what we understand, what we do not understand. I don't want to be like super high TC, but everybody has their own theory. Nobody listens to anybody else. So I have not seen the pseudo gap thing. I have heard it vaguely. I don't even understand what's meant by it. I think if you, are, if I, give a more serious answer. I think it's all an extrapolation question, something that we're talking about. You know, you look at some temperature, you see something, then you go yeah. and you can imagine that there is a gap. But if you send me the reference, I can give a more learned answer. Okay. Uh, I, I do not think that it's any, any, anything. I think more or less the physics is understood now of, of twisted bilayer graphene. There is a lot of charn insular physics, fractional charn insular physics. There are many, many symmetries that are broken. They're all mock physics with many other symmetries broken in a topological system. And then there is superconductivity, which I think is electron phonon interaction. But I, I, I am willing to be corrected. It, you know, I mean, I'm, I was very excited by what Andy said. I mean, if there is, for argument's sake, a pseudo gap, um, I understand that there is an interest in an exotic phase, but maybe wouldn't that say that I have um, condensational pairs in a piece yeah, like yeah. picture? Yeah. From sure, not sure. From sure. Mechanism. Yeah, you can certainly also make a mechanism. It, a yeah, it's a little bit a bit artificial, but you can do it. You can say, look, they're competing phases. So electron phone interaction is trying to drive superconductivity, but it's competing with something. So it, it just forms the Bose condensate, the overall global coherence doesn't come in. You know, I can draw a picture like that, but I first want to make sure this phenomenon is universal. See, because of this twist angle disorder that you know, world expert is sitting there, Jeff Pixley. Experiments are like only generically ensemble average similar. You know, no two experiments see exactly the same phase diagram and electron whole side are different. So one has to be very careful, okay? So, but, but what you say certainly can be cooked up if it's a universal phenomena. But, but I, I okay. do not recall any details, but I vaguely recall the have heart pseudo gap, the word, okay? But, but I didn't pay attention yeah, to I'll it. Send it to you. Yeah, please Thanks. do, please do. Yeah. I'm, I'm, then, I'm gonna tell you what I think. Probably I will even contact the experimentalists first to find out what Okay. They are trying to say. Okay. All right. So I think on that note, let us thank Shankar again.